In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we love you, we praise you. Thank you for your son, Jesus. He came and paid the price for us. All the pain that he went through on this earth for each one of us. Thank you for doing this to wash away all our sins and to make us who we are today. Thank you, Jesus, for the Holy Spirit who dwells inside of us. And because we have the Holy Spirit, we are not alone. We are not condemned. And we are not in pain. We are always victorious. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us so much. There's nothing that you left undone for us. You have brought us from deepest darkness into the marvelous light. Help us to understand how important and vital is your word in our life. How deep is our darkness without your word? Thank you, Holy Spirit, for glowing inside us that marvelous light so we can take it with us wherever we go, no matter what we face. Help us and remind us that you are still inside us and nothing can take, no one can take that peace from us. I thank you for each and every sister of mine present here and the others who are going to listen to this teaching. I surrender this session completely, entirely to you, Lord. Let everything be yours. Let Brother Thomas speak every word from you. Reveal to him the secrets, what you want us to know. Everything from you, nothing from him. And once we have heard that word, help us to apply it in our lives. Even if it's difficult, knowing that you're with us. Enlighten our minds. Guard our way. So we don't fall into sin. We don't fall into the trap that the evil one brings to us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Son. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And I make this prayer in Jesus' mighty and glorious name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Okay, any testimonies? Hello? Any testimonies today? Anyone has to share anything? Anything the Holy Spirit wants you to say? Come on, my dear sisters. Praise God. There will be someone here wanting to share something, but say, I'll wait for someone to speak first. <laughs> <laughs> praise praise God, God, praise God, praise God. I got it so <laughs> wonderful at all times. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, you know, we booked our tickets to go to Spain for Wednesday for my daughter's convocation. And um, I had uh, the notion that we normally not got to prepare all the documents, then you take an appointment. This is like how we understand. And I got the appointment like six weeks later. And I was so disturbed because I told them that we are flying on Wednesday and you've given me an appointment for Thursday. I mean, can I get the visa so quickly? And uh, it's so strange that in one day, Khalid got his visa. So I'm just waiting for mine to follow, which probably should come in today. So just, it's so, 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 so surprising how God works in his own ways. I submitted Wednesday evening and Thursday I got the visas. Praise God. And I kept asking them. They said two weeks, minimum 45 days. And everyone was like, no way, no way. But I was very calm, very cool. 
And I said, it will happen. And I know we will travel. So we just give glory to God for that faith, that confidence that he works in marvelous ways beyond our understanding at all times. And this is it. Praise God. So we fly on Wednesday to go to Spain. Thank you, Jesus. Great, Jesus. So anyone else? Sorry, I've got my little ones right here, okay? Just ignore the noise. Praise God. So I have to say something. And it's like, you know, how much God loves us, no matter how far we run away from him. So yeah, I've got these two boys and they were expecting another baby girl. And like, you know, when the due date is given, you wait. Oh, today. Oh, tomorrow. You're waiting. So, um, yeah, it was 11th and she was given 11th. So, and she thought it's going to happen early. And I started confessing. She's not going to be into labor. She's not going to experience labor pains, which she has been even previously. So that particular night, I just couldn't sleep on on uh, 10th night. I just couldn't sleep all night. Till 4 o'clock, I got a call on that exact due date. I got a call saying, we are going to the hospital now. Okay. And here, if the delivery is normal, they don't keep you. So they called me at 4 o'clock. And I said, okay, do you want me to come? And they said, no. But the boys are at home. And uh, it, because they sleep, boys, no problem. So uh, they left at four o'clock, my dear sisters. Got to the hospital at 4.20. She had to go third floor at, in the birth suite. So she went up and uh, she delivered at 4.38. So 4.20, 4.38. Can you imagine? And then... Um, by we went we got there by 10 o'clock by then everything they were home everything was fine the boys were happy they were cuddling and uh, talk like you know uh, touching their sister and what i felt what i took out of this see they i, I can't say they are not in the word but that word that we work for that work that I work for, I take it like that always. Doesn't matter where my family is, doesn't matter what the children are doing. But that work, word that I work for, that time that I spent with my Lord, he gives the abundance. You know, and so much smile he put on my face. And we went there, everything peaceful. She is not in any pain. It's like nothing happened in that house. The boys were happy and uh, and looking at that baby, you know, like I, I spoke about it. The moment they told me they have conceived, I heard the voice. This is Ruth for you, you know, but I think their intention was to name her. The second name was my name. Like, you know, they must be, it, it, there must be something about it. So second person is my name. So when I said about Ruth, they said, oh, is it okay? If we name her instead of you, if we name Ruth instead of me, I said, that's fine. Who am I? You know, but then I didn't know what the name is, but the name chosen was Delilah Rita. So they use one of my second name for her. So it just put a, a you know, a treasure, a big bag of jewels in my heart. And I always I feel rewarded. No matter what we go through, no matter what we face, but that God of us always, always has something big to give us, you know, and that's, that's what I felt when this was done. And I said, when she, when I said, uh, oh, you went at four and you delivered at 4.30 and she goes, mm -hmm. and I told her, look, it can't be anyone else but God. You know, God is good. This is what I said. But even though there's no reaction, I didn't take anything back. But I just had to say, my God is good. And my dear sisters, this is where it is. It's not a small thing for me. It's a big thing for me. But whatever we do, whatever we do for others comes back in abundance. If we say, okay, that's not my problem. I better ignore it and I go my way. What have I done? I've already stopped the blessing. 
So this is this is my life at the moment. You know, whenever I hear something, I stop and I say, you know, what what does it teach me? So yes, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So I just thought I would share. God never gives us any pain for no reason. When there is pain in our life, it is for us to understand there is light coming. It is for us to understand that we are the chosen ones. It is for us to understand that we are chosen from darkness. And when we want to see that light, we have to go through that. We have to endure that pain. Be patient. You know, and God's blessings are abundant. Abundant. I see that in my life every day. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Now they, they are here. That's another thing. And that just touches me how God touches those children. So they are here sitting with me. Okay. They're playing. They're doing whatever they want. So I removed my earphones and I put that song loud. So they heard that blood of Jesus, you know, and they, they both were curious. What is blood of Jesus? What blood is grandma watching? So they came near the computer and so they could hear the words as well. So, and then the picture, they're asking me, why is Jesus so much in pain? And I said, that's pain is to make you happy. To When you are in pain, you have to just say, Jesus, I love you. And then they said, but who beat him? All those questions, see now, who beat him? So I showed them the whip from my phone, how it was a metal whip. And with that, Jesus was bitten. And he was like, you know, carrying the crown of thorns. And the little one, he just looks at it and he started crying. He said, that's so sad. And I said, no, it's not sad because Jesus made us victorious. Look, and then where he was wearing the white robe, I said, see, he's standing that he's standing in a pose of a king that he's put everything under his feet and we are made victorious. So, yeah, this is an opportunity, you know, and I, I, it really touches me when I tell them and they listen to it. And I say, wow, Jesus, you are so beautiful, so beautiful. Everything, you you convey the message. Even their face, you know, when I tell them, their face conveys a message to me. That's so innocent they are, so tiny they are. And who am I? Sometimes I just run away. I just run away, you know, ignoring that voice. So this is this is what I wanted to say, my dear sisters. Praise God. Now, I think someone else can talk. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Come on. Someone else will be there with the testimony. Please don't stop talking. Let the Lord speak through you. So, someone has to talk till brother come. Praise God. Praise Jesus. Definitely something must have, must have happened. Just to give God the glory. Praise Jesus. Hello? Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus, Praise Jesus Santa. Yes, I just want to praise and thank God because the word of God says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you your heart desires. I came down from Gulf. I came to Manglo. It's a time for me to settle down. And then when I came here, I was pleading for the Lord saying, Lord, I want to know more about you. Lord, make a way for a prayer meeting for me. I stay nearby Milagris Church in Manglo. And when I went and asked, they don't have a prayer meeting over there. Now, it is nearly eight to nine months in the month of October that I came. I was looking out, but I did not find one. I don't know. It was God's grace. It's just near my house, there is an adoration. On my right, there is an adoration chapel. And to my left, there is Mother Teresa's convent, where all the aged, the sick, the suffering they are there. So the Lord helped me to get these brothers and sisters to grow in the Lord. And all the days I used to go for adoration for the mass, 
there is one lady who came and whispered in my ears, we have a prayer meeting over here, few people. We have a prayer meeting that was yesterday on Saturday. And then, oh, what a joy it was that I got what I needed. The Lord gave me the spiritual mana for me, which I was longing for. Another thing, the spiritual mana that the Lord fed me, he fed me physically as well. During the in the service only, I said, Lord, I want a bread, just like Bombay, as we get a, like, you know, vada pao, like a bread. Lord, I want to eat that. I don't want to trouble my husband to tell him that, Lord. And it was two bread I just wanted. This morning, he brought for me a samun, means like a bread, exactly like the gulf which I was getting, and wow. a bread which is exactly which I was longing for in Bombay. That is what my husband brought without telling God, mm -hmm. as it is said, even the smallest thing, the Lord knows. But that is, that's why he said, you should have a faith like a mustard seed. Mm -hmm. And this is what has increased my faith in the love of God, that even the smallest thing is so concerned as the word of God says, you are worth more than the sparrows. Mm -hmm. This is what my brothers and sisters, I want to just say, God really grants our physical need and our spiritual needs. All that we have to say is, Lord, here I am. So I just want to praise and thank the good Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Holy Spirit. Praise thank you. Praise Jesus, my thank beautiful you. sister. Glory, Lord, how Lord. beautifully you spoke. Sandra, thank how you. beautifully you spoke. You know, thank every you. word was from the Holy Spirit. Thank you. you know, and it is so sad when we that when we lack knowledge, isn't it? When we yeah. don't know who we are, and it is so mighty when you see how you are the chosen ones. Thank you, Jesus. You know, in John fifteen sixteen, I heard that voice where John fifteen sixteen says, "You did not choose me; I chose you." And not only that, I chose you to bear fruit, fruits that last forever. So I am an ordinary, I was an ordinary person, but God chose me. God chose Sandra. God chose Suzanne. God chose Fatima. We are all God's chosen one, you know, and we have a purpose to fulfill. And so beautifully, you said when you. Uh, seek God. He knows exactly what you want. And he does it even more beautifully. If you want this much, he'll do it more. You know, and uh, one, uh, two, 1 Corinthians 6, 9, I can't forget that one. Uh, 1 Corinthians 2, 9, where what no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no heart has conceived. It's the very the thing God has kept for us. Amen, amen, amen. And, but never stop, my darling. Never stop. Just hearing won't help. You have to open your mouth and share that love of God with other people of God. Amen. You know, hear it and go and speak it out. And the Holy, you will be amazed how the Holy Spirit speaks. He gives you words. And that's sort of a blessing you are. Amen. You are created to be on the top, never the bottom. You are created to be the head and not the tail. God's favor is upon you. Just go ahead and blessings will follow you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And the another desire was, is yesterday when they were singing, they were singing, like this is a song where Sister Sylvia, after a long time I heard a voice coming from Kuwait. I heard a voice today. Yesterday it was my heart desire when they used to always like this song. Yeshu bula raha, Yeshu bula raha. So when they were singing that hymn, really Sister Sylvia was on my mind. And today I heard her voice. Thank you, Jesus, for fulfilling Amen. all the smallest desire that we have. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. Praise Amen. you, Jesus. Awesome, you. awesome, awesome. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So, yes, we are the chosen ones. We can't hide. We can't hide. We reflect that light of Jesus, you know. Praise God.
Thank you, Jesus. Anyone else? Thank you, my dear sister Sandra. Thank you. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Love Praise you, Jesus. Jesus. Love you, Jesus. Anyone else want to say something? Don't listen to that other voice that's telling you not to. Listen to the voice of Christ, the Holy Spirit who's inside you. It may be a few words, but they belong to the glory of God. Come on. Say Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, if not, I welcome my brother, Thomas. Over to you, my dear. Are you there? Pray, Jesus. Praise God. Hello, brother. Okay, no two minutes. Okay, so that's what it is, Sandra. Okay, let me ask you a question. Can I? My dear sister, Sandra? Yes, Riti. Okay, how did you feel when you were sharing now about the love of God? You know, and I could see the Holy Spirit adding to your words. How did you feel? What was your experience about sharing that? Uh, the spirit testimony? of boldness gave me to speak so that I can encourage my brothers and sisters with the, that with the testimony. The woman at the well, when she heard the word of God, Jesus says, go and call your husband. What a conversation they had. And she said, I don't have a husband. That's what Jesus said. You told the truth. Yes. And the one we are staying also is not the one of your husband. They say, if you have asked me to give you a drink, I'll give you the living water. And what happened was last when she met Jesus, the living one, the living God who gives the living water, she drank that by faith. And then, and then she went and proclaimed the gospel. She went and told, they gave her testimony. Look, the man who told all about what I had done. So her testimony has touched us and our testimony should touch a millions and millions of people for the glory of God. So I just have the peace of God within me. Amen, amen, amen. Oh my goodness. What am I hearing? Who am I hearing? Look at you. You are a preacher. You've got the tongue of a teacher. Amen. I claim You're it. You're called to team. minister the word to the people of God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, am I right, my dear sisters? Yes, sweetheart. Sylvia, yes, am yes. I right? What did you think, Sylvia? What you heard from Sandra? Praise God. My dear sisters, anyone I, can I, I, I know Sandra from a couple of years in Kuwait. Um, she's a wonderful person. Very holy, very anointed. And uh, she has yeah. that in gift of the Holy Spirit, you know, and that power comes only with conviction and deep faith. And she's gone through a lot and praise God. God has given a victory in all circumstances. So what I see of her is she's not just an evangelist, but she has a far way more task of bringing the souls to the vineyard of our Lord, because there are many lost souls in Kuwait and she's working on it. Amen. 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 Praise God. And she is the chosen one for you, like you said. Yes, highly anointed you know? child of God. Yes, and been through a lot. That's that's the uh, fact. That's the reason why she's been through a lot. Because there's something lot awaiting ahead of her. Amen. Amen. Precious thing. Oh my goodness. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Awesome, my dear. Saved me so much, brother, brothers, sisters. The evil wanted to destroy me right from the time when I was small. But the Amen. grace of God that has saved me, he had good plans for me, as I said, Jeremiah 29, 11. He has so much, the devil wanted to kill me with cancer, with the exactly. eye operation, breast cancer, with my eyes six times being operated. 
though I lost one of my eyesight, though I lost oh, one of my body, even though my physical body is decaying, but my physical Amen. spirit is growing and growing and growing and growing for the glory of God. One mission I have is just to show that love, not to be a pulpit preacher, but to proclaim the gospel with my love and my action. Amen. That's wow. all I'm asking the good Lord. May I decrease, may Jesus increase by his love in my heart. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And my dear sister, you don't know how many sisters you're talking to today. You don't know how many people you're preaching today. You know, when we are in a mess, we come out with a message. Amen. When we are tested, we have a testimony. If we are not tested, we don't have a testimony. If we are not in a mess, we don't have a message. We have to go in a pit. Only then we come on a pulpit. And at that and time, God we need to is be the still reason. and know he is God. Amen. And God is the reason for every season. For every season. And we don't have to go looking for him. He's dwelling inside us. It is no yes. longer I that live, but Christ lives in us. Yes. Amen, my dear sister. Praise God. I feel so proud that you are here today. Praise Jesus. Praise God. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Awesome. Isn't it, my dear sisters? Do you want to say something to her? Sandra actually preached. Anyone wants to say anything? Any word of encouragement to your sister? Praise God. No one wants to talk or say anything. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, then, my dear brother, over to you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Um, I started learning, uh, you know, a car, and uh, I was just giving the ignition, like the start. And each time I was doing that, uh, my car was going like inch, inch ahead. So I had to like take it to another kilometer. So I kept on giving the ignition and each time I was, you know, moving the key, the car was moving ahead. Is that how it happens? Praise God. Brother, are you? Are you just telling me you were learning to drive the car? Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I'm just giving an example. Ah, okay. Praise God. But, yeah, I don't know actually. I don't know yeah. to, to drive. But uh, does that happen? Yeah, with course. the car yeah so yeah. you give an ignition like you just start and then each time you move the key you know you ignite the the engine so it moves inch inch right so suppose if i have to take it to yeah. 100 meter i have to give like uh, at least 10 times i have to ignite it right yes ignite means you got to like you on know, the you to like start button or uh, on the key or you know like how do you say that how do you say like starting the engine like with yeah the key? you ignite the engine once yes and it starts. no so that's what i'm doing like in order to move ahead in order to move forward i'm yeah. igniting the engine each time so every time i'm igniting it's going inch inch like you know it is moving no, ahead. No, no, is no. this how it happens? It doesn't happen that way, brother. Okay. Maybe, so, maybe the maybe the brake, you know, that uh, middle, which is next to the seat, that brake handle, if it's down, it does happen. No, I'm not going to use my gear. I'm not going to use my accelerator. I'm not going to use any of the functions. I'm only going to use one function, and that is to start the engine. And I'm hoping, expecting, believing that the start is uh, the car is going to move. But if the car is parked and the handle brake is stopped, you know, yeah. the side, normally you close the car and you also put the brake in the side next to your seat, locked. Correct. So still the car will start? Let's hope. <laughs> no, the car will start, but it will not move till you accept. That's what he said. No, it'll stop. Every, because I, I personally had this experience. I didn't know when the driving institute, they had not taught me that. that when you put the handbrake, you know, uh, yeah. you can't uh, directly take the car and drive on the road. And I was driving when I got my license and it was stopping every two, 
seconds or minutes. Yeah, because I, of the handbrake. You know? yeah, that so, can happen. Yeah, so if the handbrake is down, I don't think the car would drive straight. It will have this stop. Yeah. Yeah, but what my point is, the moment you ignite the engine, okay, now there's a next step that you have to go into. Then you go into the clutch and the the gear and the engine, you know, movement. Like slowly, you will, uh, you know, start pressing your feet on the clutch and and the uh, accelerator, and then the car is going to move. But my question is, each time when I'm starting the engine, when I'm igniting it, will it move it or will it just start and keep it there? Start and keep it there. Yeah, exactly is what happens in our life with the emotions. That's what we're going to learn today. Thank you, because Jesus. you keep on, uh, move, you know, you will never. So emotions are like, you know, for example, uh, I have to go for a tracking or if I have to walk, let's say, 20, 30 kilometers, probably like 10, 12 miles. If I have to walk alone, it's a very, very uh, difficult if you don't enjoy walking and you are all alone in the heat of the, uh, you know, like you are under the sun, uh, this thing, it would be very boring. But let's say you are all the family members and you are loved on and your friends and you're talking and you're singing and you're talking about a lot of and you're making funs and you all are talking. And when you go there, it would be fun to walk that 10 kilometers. Yes, your body would be tired, but it would be fun along you know, going along with those people. But when you are alone, it's a very, very difficult task. And that's what happens with the emotion in our life. You know, going with your family is when your emotions are high. But going alone is when your emotions are low. And that's why so many people find it difficult to, you know, walk with the Lord or, you know, prayer or to... Or, do a certain things, confess scriptures, because this very much depend on emotions. And like I said, uh, once you start the car, that's the only point or that's the only time you will use your key unless the car stops. For some reason, the engine gets cut off and it stops. Then again, you will have to use the, the start key, the, the igniting of the engine. But once you are on the move, then there are other functions that you have to use. Okay. There is that gear and there is a clutch and there is an escalate. Uh, I'm making uh, this thing. So all these things, all these three things that you would use and there your car would be in motion. So we're going to see one example. Uh, this is in Matthew chapter 11. And this is a wonderful, wonderful example. Matthew chapter 11, verse 1 onwards. Thank you, Baba Enoch. Praise God. Okay. And it came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding his 12 disciples. Now, if you see Matthew 10 is about, you know, he sent those 72 people and they came back uh, stating that Jesus in your name be cast out. And in Matthew, uh, where he says uh, 10, he says that I have given you power and authority. And he sent those 70 or 72 disciples and then, you know, they return. So that's all happened in Matthew 10. He says, when you're brought before the council, do not um, beforehand prepare what you will say for your father. The spirit of father will speak through you. So all that instruction he gave in Matthew 10. Now when it is Matthew 11, when Jesus had made an end of commanding his 12 disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. So he is on another mission. Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent Two of his disciples. Who is sending the disciple? John the Baptist. Where is he? He is in the prison. What was he doing before going to prison? He had the biggest ministry that the man of God had ever, ever seen. Okay. Elijah, Elijah, Moses. Moses was leading people. But I believe John the Baptist is to conduct a prayer meeting. And who is to come for his prayer meeting? All 
the big big people in the religion world and he used to say you brood of vipers and he would say uh, you know who do you think that you are and and he was very very fiery preacher and uh, the bible says he never performed any miracle no miracles no healing no deliverance nothing only he was preaching the message of repentance repent and you know he was preparing for jesus he had a big big ministry big ministry and he was very well known and he was an awesome man of god and people recognized him he was really you know great but now he is in the prison his ministry is stopped there are hardly like earlier he had maybe uh, maybe in hundreds disciples now there are very few who are with him and those disciple of john came to him and he he sent them to jesus and he said uh, when john had heard in the prison the works of christ he sent two of two of his disciple and said unto him art thou he that should come or do we look for another one who is he asking jesus he saying are you the messiah or should we wait for another one why do you think he doubted he was the first one who called jesus behold the lamb of god who takes away the sins of the world behold the lamb of god he was the first one to hear abba father speaking about jesus behold he is my son with whom i am well pleased he saw the holy spirit coming like a dove and abiding residing on jesus he he noticed it he says you know i have come um, but after me there is one who is coming who is greater than i am i am not worthy to untie his sandal and he saw the lamb of god he saw the holy spirit's anointing he saw the affirmation of god the father for jesus and yet because of his circumstances he saying are you the one are you the one and this is what happens your circumstances would affect your emotions and your emotions once it gets dried you will be uh you know start doubting here he is doubting you know what he has just done a person let's say has lived his life just with one purpose just with one purpose no other purpose he did not buy any land there was no investment he did not buy any share uh, you know stock in share market he did not invest in any of the uh, realty uh, you know world he did not nothing he did nothing means nothing there was just one thing he did all his life was to prepare the way for jesus but when the circumstances were negative he was doubting the very purpose of his life he was doubting the very thing that he had done all his life in saying are you the one are you the one is it really true what i've what i've heard is it really true what i've seen is it really true and that circumstances made him to doubt on jesus and now when in verse number 3 they came and asked him that are you the one or should we wait for another jesus answered and said to them go and show john again those things which you do here and see now the way jesus is answering to him is he saying i'm not going to say whether i am the messiah or you know i am the one who is supposed to come but here is what i am doing and what i am doing go and tell him and then what he did was number 5 the blind received their sight and the lame walked and the lepers were cleansed and the deaf hear and the dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them so he did not tell the gospel uh, he did not tell them anything but he showed them what he was and he sent them back okay can you scroll to verse number 6 Enoch Can you scroll it down baba take it to verse number 6 yeah thank you now he saying blessed is he 
now talking about john whoever shall not be offended in me and then as they departed jesus began to say unto the multitude concerning john now when he was supposed to you know what he is going through an emotional low of his life john is struggling literally he is questioning the very purpose he came for he is questioning the calling that he had he is questioning the prophecy that he received for his life he is questioning the the manifestation of god's glory that he saw the voice that he heard the lamb of god that he saw the anointed one that he saw he is questioning everything because of the negative circumstances and instead of telling to john the baptist the way jesus spoke now he did not say that i mean you know sometimes um, we call people we are feeling low and i don't feel like doing this and i feel i'm good for nothing and i'm doing and then you know we call up brothers and sisters and and we have brothers and sisters are so nice and so very kind uh, they'll say come on you are uh, a child of god come on you are uh, you know you are anointed and and we feel very nice especially i have come from a very broken background i had lot of emotional issues i had a problem for uh, you know approval addictions i was trying to please people and i had lot of negative uh, background uh, i came from but god did not allow me to grow in that same thing he did speak to me he did uh, you know uh, there were people who prophesied so uh, once it happened that uh, there was a very big meeting in mumbai big means at least there were like 5 to 10000 people and the preacher who came there he called my name and he says you 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 that person you come on the stage and he took me on and he is a television uh, you know preacher like i'm talking about uh, 15 20 years back and he called me on the on the stage and he said the lord has this plan for your life and god is going to use me and i was just like 20 21 years old and that was so amazing i felt so nice you know that i was completely rejected by everyone i was emotionally broken i felt so nice uh, in front of the whole congregation and on television you know everybody could see me that you know man of god has called me and he prophesied over me and he said that god is going to use you mightily and all of that i felt so nice but let me tell you that whatever feeling nice went down like it subsided after some time why because we tend to hold see if i say something hurting to you if i say something hurtful words to you you will hold on to that emotion okay uh, or you can hold on to the word that i say if i say something nice to you you can hold on to that good feeling or you can hold on to the word that I, uh, that god speaks to you i speak to you and this is where we need to understand that uh, you know jesus is not praising him when his disciples were around when they departed that's when he says what went you out in the wilderness to see a reed shaken with the wind but what went you out for to see a man clothed in soft raiment behold they that wear soft clothing are in christmas i'm sorry they are in king's houses but what went you out to see a prophet yeah i say unto you more than a prophet what he says for this is a this is he of whom it is written behold i send a messenger before thy face which shall prepare thy way before you can you scroll it down was 11 verily i send to you among them uh, was 11 uh, 11 among them that are born of women there had not risen a greater than john the baptist no one ever ever was greater than john the baptist 
not with not withstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he so what is he saying you know there is like spiritual children of god and the actual physical children of god before uh, christ you know so he is saying those who are born of women nobody is greater greater than john the baptist now tell me if god has to say to you this that you know you are greater than noah greater than abraham you are greater than daniel uh, joseph abraham if god has to say that to you wow you would be uh, filled with you know uh, joy and emotions you would be crying and you would be laughing and you would be so happy and i'm sure and if god has to say that to you that i have not seen an anointed and a nice person like you are and you are greater than this one that one that one if god had to say to you you would be so very excited i would be so excited but jesus did not deal with his emotional problem with the emotional comfort see when we are in emotional problem we are looking for an emotional comfort but jesus gave him the word comfort the word comfort and that's why he says whatever you see go and tell him because in isaiah chapter 40 the entire chapter talks about jesus is coming it talks about john the baptist role and it talks about jesus coming the first coming and he uh, taken him or he has shown him the scripture written about him many a times when we kind of you know want these things there was one uh, in my initial days of my spiritual life there was one sister in our jaise uh, alim she could hear audible voice of god she could hear audible voice of god and there were people in the morning 9 o'clock 10 o'clock 8 8 o'clock she they would call her good morning sister praise the lord and the next question would be what is the lord saying about me today what is the lord saying about me today and then uh, it's little sad but that sister who was hearing the audible voice of god i know her very well you know but she was not rooted in the word and she was going because you could be very easily deceived for example uh, you have a map in your hand and you have that instruction coming from that google lady who is telling you away so if you have a map you will not go uh, you know you will not get lost she i mean the voice cannot deceive you neither can the map deceive you because both are um, complementing each other so that is how you have the word of god and you have the inspiration of the holy spirit both will lead you lead you to the right direction but if you just have one and ignore the other one then you are in danger okay um, there is one like there was one very 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 anointed man of god very humble and very anointed man of god and he shared his testimony and he says yesterday and he was crying while he was preaching and he said yesterday i was having a fellowship with the lord and the lord appeared in my room and i spoke to him and he showed me so many things and he was so very happy that the lord came to his room and you know visited him so where i was going for a prayer meeting that man of god whom like i was attending he was his disciple or he was following the the main preacher so he said god if he is your son then i am also your son i want to see you so after hearing the testimony of that man of god he went home our leader and he cried to the lord and the lord appeared in his house and then he spoke to the lord and the lord showed him so many things then i heard the testimony i came home i said if that man of god is your son if the our leader is your son then i am also your son i too want to see you so what do you think why did it happen did god came through window or door or from the roof what do you think what do you think anyone brother can you repeat it 
I said the great man of God who saw Jesus. Okay, he said, God, I want to see you. And God appeared to him in his room where he was praying. Our leader, who was the disciple of that man of God, he also prayed and he said, God, I want to see you. And then God appeared in his room too because he was praying. You know, his room was locked. Now, listening to both of their tes testimony, I also went and I locked my bedroom before my marriage. And I said, God, I want to see you. What do you think? Did God appear? Appeared. No. Why? Does it, that means he doesn't love me. No, he must. No. He love me. You must have experienced his presence, brother. Yeah, that's what I was asking for, a physical presence of God or his vision or, you know, him to physically, like, my, uh, that I could see him through my eyes or I could feel his presence. He did not come. He did not give me that. Why do you think? God, God's presence is felt in various ways, brother. It's not... God is physically God comes down. He can no, come no. down in. See, different... my question was I was asking, I was crying, I was saying, if I am your son yeah. and if you love me, I want to see you. Yes, his presence, as she said rightly, his presence will be there covering you. But uh, seeing Correct. physically, yeah. he comes in different forms. Correct. But how did he appear to those two men of God and not to me? That means he doesn't love me, right? No, God loves everyone equally. Then why is he appearing to that great man of God, our leader, and not to me? Maybe he was not in the mood. He was in... not in mood to come. What you said? No, he was great man of God. That's why. <laughs> oh, so that means I am not a great man of God. <laughs> children of God. Acha, so. God loves him more than me, right? No, brother. <laughs> okay. That is a twisted question. He doesn't want you to test him. I am not testing. I am asking out of love. That's my it's desire to see. It's a twisted him. question. Okay. So he did answer to me when I was asking him. And what he answered to me, he says, Blessed are those who believe in me without seeing. So, what my point here is, more than the sight of God, more than the vision of God, what I was taught by the word of God. And I am living by the word of God because he said, blessed are those who believe in me without seeing me. And the moment, like I was crying and I'm saying, God, I want to see you, I want to see you. And I mean, obviously, because I heard those testimonies and on the same day when I came back home, I was crying and I heard God in my heart. And I, he said, uh, blessed are those who believe in me without seeing me. And I got up and I said, I don't want to see you. I believe in you because he was ministering to me through the word. He was ministering to me through the word. And the more you live off the word and not the emotions follows after the word, not the manifestation of God's glory follows the word. See, you need to understand there is something that causes it. Okay, there is a wind that causes and there are you know, cloths and, and the leaves that are shaken or things that, that are moving. That's an outcome of that wind that blows. So, word is what is more important and all other things are the outcome or the result of that word. And here, John the Baptist is trying to come out of his negative emotions. Instead of comforting him, saying that you are the greatest man ever born, God is saying, go and show him what you have seen. Why? Because he is taking him back to the word. John the Baptist lived all his life believing in the prophecy, believing in the word. But if you are living of emotions, you know, then you are, uh, you know, I wouldn't say it's wrong, but like you need to have a balance. You need to have a balance. Okay. Um, let's read one scripture in uh, James chapter 3, 
was five. Uh, sorry, was fifteen and sixty. James chapter three. Fifteen and sixteen. Okay, this wisdom comes not or descended not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. Can you go to any other translation, maybe NET or NIV or NKJV, NLT, whichever you can? Yeah. Shall I read, brother? Uh, yeah, let me just pick one that would give you that. Uh, scroll it down. Just see for where the word is soulish. Soulish. Earthly, sensual, devilish. I think NKG we would have that. Sensual. Okay. So basically what he says, you know, there are three realms. Okay. Now there is a realm or I would say four realm. Okay. One, that's spiritual realm. Okay. Second, that is earthly realm. Now all of us are living on earthly realm. Okay. Then there is a sensual realm or soulish or emotional realm. And emotional realm or the soulish realm is very, very close to the demonic realm. You might have seen people who go into depression, okay? Uh, depression meaning, you know, uh, emotional trauma or emotional issues. And, you know, they tend to get, you know, uh, like the problem of evil spirit or a demonic problem. Why? Because they are living on emotions too much. Now, when you are in prayer, when you are in the spiritual world, what you need to understand is live by the word as much as you can. And the emotions are a result of the word that you believe, that you confess, that you live on, that you believe on. Okay. But if you live too much of like, um, I have seen people, um, they like to shake, they like to fall. It's obviously the power of God. I'm not saying it's wrong. But if you are always, 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 always living in the realm of that emotions, if you are living in the realm of emotions, like God could have appeared to me. God could have caused any bird to come in my house and say, I love you or God loves you. You are a precious child of God. But he wants me to live in the realm of faith, in the realm of the word of God. Believing in the word of God. So my thing, you know, I mean, I was also like that where, you know, I would cry, 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 cry. Uh, I used to shake, I used to fall and all that thing. And it is good. Okay. It is really, really, you feel so nice and you feel so uh, this thing. But that is just an uh, igniting the engine. That's just a start. Okay. You cannot continue your car the car is not going to move on that. It is a start. And all of us have been through that. All of us needed that. But now you need to go little ahead. You need to go on a higher realm. And the higher realm, after the emotional realm, is the word realm. Is the faith realm. It's the word of God that you are standing on. There are so many preachers or so many men of God I know, brothers I know. They never shaken in life. Never, ever. They never fallen, ever. Look at the power of God in their life. Look at the manifestation of God's glory in their life. So I'm trying to balance here. Okay, I'm not saying it's wrong and I'm not saying it's right. What I'm saying is you need to know that ignition is a must thing when you start a car. It has to happen. Okay, it, the car cannot start. The car cannot run without that. It has to have. The emotion is so very essential part of your spiritual journey and your relation with God. It, you have to have that. It is very, very important. But you cannot live always with your emotion. 
or you cannot suppress your emotions also okay some people are live off the emotions the other are suppressing the emotion both are not a right way to do it you have to have a balance but i want to encourage you to live by the word to live by the word make decision according to the word let the word speak to your heart can we go to colossian chapter 3 verse 16 colossian chapter 3 verse 16 i know every time i talk about faith and other things people like it but some things that I have to talk on some things that we need to make changes in our life colossian chapter 3 verse 16 uh enoch are you there brother enoch colossian chapter 3 verse 16 Yeah, you can go to KGV. Yeah, it says, "Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord." And the next verse says, "Whatever you do, uh, in word or deed." do it all in the name of the lord jesus giving thanks to god and the father so basically you know the word of god that's what you need to live by john the baptist jesus could have said that you are the greatest man i've ever seen or greatest man that god has ever created it would have done him a great you know Uh, because he was going through emotional problems and emotional issues in his life he needed someone to comfort him he needed someone to say you are good i don't know i mean um, i can understand you know i've been through such a, a i don't know like a very difficult life like all my life i was rejected by the my relatives because i was living with them my mom my uncle and my aunt and all of them because they had their children and they would always compare me they would say you know they are better than you their handwriting is better than you you don't have wisdom you are a fool and they are much wiser and they are this and they are that so they always would compare me and always you know reject me rejected me i was away from my parents my mother and father so i never experienced their uh, comfort their love their uh, affirmation you know their uh, i never experienced that so my life was like i was struggling to please people the more i tried to please people the more i got rejected and the more i got rejected the more i got, uh, i was trying to please people the more i got hurt the more i got rejected the more i tried the more i tried the more i got rejected you know i mean there were people would say about my eyebrows and they would say you are very thick and black eyebrows and these are very big and it doesn't look nice on you and you won't believe like at the age of 15 i think 14 or 15 they somebody just commented on my eyebrows they saying it's very dark and um, thick and dark so i went and i shaved the next day now imagine after shaving that eyebrows i could not go to my school i could not go out of the house because i had completely shaven the the eyebrows because somebody just commented on me so my effort was to please people but when i came in the lord obviously he gave me so much of emotional love and i experienced god in the emotion way but after that he put me from that milk that you know milk to a solid food and the solid food was the word of god now i know i am loved i belong because of the word of god now i know that i am valuable not because somebody said something or somebody did not say something or something happened or something did not happen i know i am loved because the word of god says i am loved i know i belong i know that god loves me not because i have things or you know because i know the word of god i am not uh, moved or i am not uh, kind of you know not by the circumstances or what people say or what what people don't say it's through the word when i uh, meditate on the word when i'm holding on the word okay when i'm holding on the word that's when i know that where i belong to okay and that is where we need to learn 
natural where we all live but when you move from natural to a sensual or soulish realm that's where you will find most of the people one day they are rejoicing and praising and second day they are crying they are depressed they are in negative mood because you know things doesn't happen always the way you want but if you know who you are and if you are grounded and rooted let's go to that scripture again uh, if Ephesians chapter 3 was uh, 17 onwards Ephesians chapter 3 uh, Ephesians chapter 3 was 17 onwards and Christ may dwell in your heart by faith that you being rooted and grounded in love you know uh, imagine the 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 bouquet okay those uh, rose uh, flowers or some flowers that we have okay the moment it is cut okay it might look so beautiful those uh, bouquet and all those flowers and those beautiful expensive flowers roses and all other i don't know much about it so but in order to keep that flower which is in the bouquet you have to always always water it the more you sprinkle the water the more it remains fresh but the moment you stop sprinkling the water or as the time passes like in 1 2 3 days okay maybe after 12 hours or 24 hours or uh, in the 30 hours 36 hours that freshness of that flowers will start going down and that's how your emotions are it needs a sprinkling all the time of someone saying something wow i felt so good she said daughter she said darling she said this she said that oh my husband said this my my son said this or that one said my my boss praised me that one praised you are like that cut uh, roses in the bouquet needs a refreshing of that water always the bible does not say that you know you be like the flowers in that bouquet which needs the sprinkling of water every hour or every 10 minutes he says that you be rooted and grounded in love so my connection has to be with the lord and his word my connection has to be what the word of god says about me i i read one word i get the understanding and revelation from god and it's my job to get rooted in that word more and more and more and more and as i'm grounded and rooted in that word okay i am becoming stronger i my my nature is changed my expectation is changed my heart is changed my bitterness is gone my uh, all that negative emotions that i had it's all going because i'm getting rooted and grounded in the word of god in the love of god it does not say that get sprinkled with the love of god it doesn't say you know get uh, like there'll be shower or there'll be like a sprinkling if the roses are cut the flowers are cut it requires every 5 minutes the sprinkling and my life was like that i was that cut uh, you know i was that uh, rose or i was that flower which was completely uprooted from its root and i needed that 5 minutes 10 minutes every time somebody to say something somebody to comment me praise me applause me i needed that but when i came in the lord now whether you praise me or you hate me or do anything because as long as i'm rooted in the word and in the love of god i feel nothing i mean i don't care i mean i don't it really doesn't bother me it doesn't hurt me i may feel bad for a moment or something but the next moment the moment i focus on the word of god i am out of that okay and it also means like suppose if you are going in the market and uh, you are like in the middle of the market where all the crowd is and all the people are and there is one mad person come from some corner and he gives you a bad word he curses you he says you know you are a stupid woman you are good for nothing and you go and die and you all that thing he says to you how many of you will start crying in the middle of that market how many of you will feel so bad and start crying not eat for 2 3 days and he'll say you know he said that you are a stupid woman and he says that you're good for nothing and, and how many of you will do that nobody say pagale he is mad who will 
care about his words now the same thing if your husband says the same word you're good for nothing you fool what if your husband says that then and surely you know we'll not eat for two three days we'll talk we'll so bad we'll cry why you know why when the the mad person that uh, you know the mentally retired person or who's uh, mad when he said that you don't feel anything the same words are said but when the same words are spoken by your husband you feel so bad the reason is because of the value that you put on your husband's word the value that you give to your husband's word and the value that you did not give to the words of that person okay the same thing happens when you give value to the word of god nothing will shake you nothing will uh, offend you when you meditate when you value the word of god nothing will meditate uh, nothing will shake you nothing will hurt you nothing will offend you because your focus is on the word you are not a, a rose that needs a sprinkling every 5 10 minutes you are a rose grounded in god grounded in jesus christ i am not a flower that needs a sprinkling of praise and appreciation and affirmation and uh, you know uh, praises from somebody from my family i am a flower grounded in the word grounded in the love of god grounded in the things of god and that's how i am you know strong and i am able to go through all that pressure that comes in praise the lord can you scroll it to 18 verse number 18 and may be able to comprehend with all sense what is the breadth the length the depth and the height and to know the love of christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of god okay so i want you to like as soon as you get in your car the first thing that you do is you know you just ignite the engine that's your first step and everybody has to do that the second day second thing as soon as the car is started you will put it in the gear and now you are going to move it like from uh, 5 kilometers per hour and then 10 then 20 then 40 then it depends on you know uh, how much can you take it like depending on the car car's capacity or the road's capacity or how much is allowed legally depending on that you can go to that high speed okay similarly in a spiritual world the uh, the moment you are experiencing that emotional love of god i could say that that's the starting point but go on from there from all that negative uh, from that emotion to the word of god stand strong make the word of god you know every decision that you make every uh, every action that you do every decision that you make let the word of god be the base for that decision you know i can give you so many testimonies i have not always i can say that you know 100% i have obeyed the word of god and i never uh, you know made a mistake or i never disobeyed god but whenever i have obeyed god whenever i have obeyed the word of god i have seen great great manifestation of god's glory and how i could do that is because of the word that was spoken to me from my heart the lord used that and that word gave me the victory in life that word gave me the the guidance that word gave me the strength when i was in negative so here in john the baptist case jesus could have comforted him with the emotional comfort but he says john i want you to go back to the word i know you are going through a very tough time but you know i want you to go back to your roots and your roots were the prophecy the word of god that was spoken over your life i want you to go there and start meditating promises that god had given you don't move away don't sh- get shaken just because things are not happening the way you expected i want you to stand i want you to get hold of or stand strong can we go to um uh, exodus chapter 14 
Exodus chapter 14, verse 13 and 14. Enoch. You know, my testimony is I have experienced God of 14, 13 and 14. I've ex I had experienced God. I had seen miracles. Um, I think I've shared that uh, when I was asking forgiveness from the Lord, I could feel the blood, the drop of water or you know, drop of blood falling. My eyes were closed and I was asking the Lord to forgive me for the sin that I've committed. And I felt there was a drop of water falling on my hand. And the moment I opened my eyes, there was nothing. There was not even single, a small, you know, water or anything. But I could literally feel that. And the moment I opened my eyes and I saw the man of God, that preacher, that leader, he announced that I saw the blood of Jesus falling on some people. So he not only forgiven me with the word, okay, but I had an actual uh, physical experience of his forgiveness. But does that like always happen? Does it happen even now? No. Now God speaks to me, not through those uh, symbol or symptoms, but through the word. He speaks to me through the word. And then I had experienced healing. I had seen people getting healed. I had seen manifestation, deliverance. I had seen so many of those things. But what changed my life is this scripture which I'm sharing with you. Exodus chapter 14 verse 13, Baba. Can you please scroll it down? 13, 1, 3. 13, 1, 3, 1, 3. Exodus chapter 14 verse... Yeah. And Moses said unto the people, Fear you not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptian whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more, no more forever. And the Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. So this scripture, this teaching changed my life in verse number 15. And the Lord said unto Moses, why are you crying to me? Can you scroll it, Baba? One more verse, 15. Why are you Christ unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. But you lift up the rod and stretched out thy hands over the sea and divide it and the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. God is saying, why are you crying to me? I want you to lift your rod and stretch thy hands over the sea and divide it. Okay, now here Moses did not get answer because he was crying, but he got the breakthrough because he was holding the word of God. My life changed when I saw experienced, you know, miraculous things. I saw deliverance. I saw manifestation of God's power and love. It was very good. I felt so nice and so precious and, you know, I belong to the family of God. But my life changed is when I started to learn, when I started, uh, when I learned to stand on the word. Here he's saying, stand on my word. Hold your peace and stand on my word. And till when you have to stand, till you see the breakthrough here. So I learned to rely, to depend on the word. My emotions sometimes come, sometimes doesn't. Sometimes I feel, sometimes I don't feel. But I stand on the word. I stand on the word. And when I stand on the word, that's when I see the greater manifestation of God's glory in my life. So I want to encourage you, as you have ignited the engine of your car, the next step would be to stand on the word. Stand on on the promises, stand on the will and the plan of God for your life. Okay? Uh, I mean, the best thing, if you ask me, our childhood, you know, the childhood memories and, and the life that we lived was so awesome. But we can't be, you know, all our life, we can't be children. We have to grow. We need to go to the next stage and, and the next stage and the next stage and next stage. So similarly, 
when you experience god when you experience encounter god that's when you the next thing that you need to move on is to get grounded in the word of god get uh, you know renew your mind and get grounded on the word of god praise the lord uh, sister is it okay if we close now sister maria uh yes brother yeah is sister maria there yeah yeah i'm here okay Praise God. Praise God. Yep. Oh, someone can make a closing prayer. Yeah, I will do brother. Um, before that, um, someone, anyone would like to ask anything or to share anything in what the uh, brother said. Oh, okay. If no, then do the Thanksgiving prayer. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for this teaching, Lord. Thank you so much, Holy Spirit, for this beautiful teaching that you did through Brother Thomas, Lord. And we thank you that the word of God, Lord, it always encourages us. It gives us comfort. And every time you are teaching us Holy Spirit to focus only and only what the word of God says. And yes, Lord, with your help, Holy Spirit, with your help, we focus on what the word of God says. Nothing else, Lord. We stand, we rely on your promises, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus, for the word, for what you are saying and what you already said, Lord. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus. And thank you, Holy Spirit, for always reminding us what the word of God says to us, Lord. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, with your strength, Lord. We change our thinking. We renew our mind every day, Lord, with the word of God. Thank you so much, Holy Spirit. And we are not controlled with our emotion. You are teaching us, Lord. Whatever we do, every decision, every work, whatever we do, we focus only what the word of God says to us, what the promises says, what our Heavenly Father says to us, Lord. Thank you so much, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us to balance, to have balance in our life. And yes, every time we stand on your word, Lord, we focus on your word, we hold on what you say to us, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. And with your help, Lord, we, stuck, we stick on your word, Lord. Thank you so much, Holy Spirit. Nothing of us, Lord, because of you, because you are there in us, you dwell in us. You always give us comfort. You always teach us. You always... Speak through us, Lord, because of you, Lord, Holy Spirit. Okay. We do everything, Lord. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 
and we thank you for each and every one lord those who will listen this teaching afterwards on youtube lord we thank you that you are teaching us and yes lord we know you are teaching us and helping us guiding us in every area of our life lord thank you so much holy spirit for always being there with us to guide us lord thank you so much holy spirit thank you so much lord thank you our father thank you jesus thank you holy spirit in jesus name we pray amen 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 praise god thank you jesus amen praise lord peaceful prayer